Okay, so I'm here today with Ron, who is the fortunate owner of this magnificent vehicle. Ron, this is your uh, XK120. A 1956, did you say? No, 1954. 1954? Yeah, a 1954 Roadster. Yep. And um, this was a car that I acquired in 2000, late 2005 after an extensive uh, search for something that would match what we have here. Right. And uh, after a, a year of searching, uh, which went unfulfilled, yep. we decided that the only way that we could find what we were looking for was to do a restoration. Yep. So we bit the bullet yep. and uh, a we acquired a, uh, a what we call a donor car, a, which happened to be a nondescript uh, car. Um, and what sort of condition was it in when you well, acquired very it? Very typical, a little rust here and there. They okay. all had uh, a little rust here and there. Was so. it original paint back then as well? Uh, it was not original paint, okay. but uh, the paint wasn't great. But yep. um, but it was suitable uh, as a donor car. Right, so it was in good and enough condition. Good enough condition so that uh, we and we selected a, uh, a specialist, a uh, specialist who uh, uh, was very familiar with uh, 120s yep. and had a lot of experience uh, building uh, uh, cars like this yep. uh, for uh, uh, show car purposes. So full restores. And that's what we were looking for, yes. Uh, and so how and much work had to be done to get this car to this condition? The body work was extensive or it was fairly light? No, it was pretty heavy. Right. It was very, very heavy and uh, required uh, a lot of work and a lot of time. I would say that's where most of the money is spent uh, with restorations is on the body work. That's the most difficult. Yeah. So you want the body to be as, as as close to perfect as possible when you purchase the donor car. Yes, that's right. that's true. The other the other uh, element that we look for is the chrome. The chrome is in a very even though there's not very much chrome on this car. Yeah. Um, you want the chrome to be pristine, and by that I mean without waviness and mirror-like and without pitting. Yeah. And that's very. There are a lot of. Uh, chrome shops around but most of them can't match right, what, what this guy is. did yeah. and you have to pay a premium yeah. for it so when you're did. talking about the chrome you're talking about the bumpers and the lights and uh, and so forth so there's not a lot of it on this car there's this not the a lot of it but there's enough so that uh, i could tell you it was very costly to to have I this see. done i see the right way yeah very costly and can, can you tell me a little bit about this color that was the other thing that we were looking for. Um, the XK120 was a post-war car. Yep. Uh, they started making them in 1948. So this is the first sports car out of Jaguar after World War II, was it? Yes, yes. that's right. Yep. And um, most technology, by the way, was pre-war. Yeah. But still, it, it was unique in that it could reach a top speed, so they said, of 120 miles per hour, even though uh, some of 100, these... 120 miles yeah, an hour is, yeah. is pretty am yeah. amazing. And some of them went even faster than yeah. that, but yeah. they weren't... And that was uh, really quite a sensation at the time because it's most of the other ones of the of that era were yeah. putt-putts. Right, <laughs> right. And anyone doing 120 miles an hour with drum brakes it it's is, crazy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so that created a sensation. The other thing that um, collectors looked for at the time, yep. or buyers, was the fact that uh, it was very cost effective. Yep. The price was right. Right. The price was So they were, they were a popular car for yeah. what they were at the time. But getting back to the color, yep. um, most of the colors were nondescript. They were... Um, I assume British uh, Racing Green must have British been a popular. British Racing Green yeah. was very popular, and uh, red was very popular, and uh, they are eye-catching, eye but 95% of the uh, buyers would select British Racing Green sure. or, or the red. Yeah, right. And right around that time, they started to build the XK140s, the, the next successor. model up. Yep, yep. 
And interestingly enough, they decided that they were going to use this color, this maroon color, uh, okay. for the 140. So this is really a 140 color, but because they're on the, belt, the production line at the same time, you could actually get the 120 in this color. That's exactly right. I see. And, I see. and all of a sudden, this maroon yeah. color became an a, a correct color right. for the 1954 120. So this must be a very rare color for it a 120. It is, it's then, very yes. rare. But you, still correct. But still correct. Wow. Yep. I checked this out with uh, Jaguar Heritage yep. uh, uh, Group yep. uh, and uh, they confirmed that what I just told you is yep. correct. Yep. Let's, let's stop and take a look at some of the details. We'll start, I think, with the engine and then we'll move on to the interior. Okay. And then if I'm very lucky, we will uh, take it for a drive. Okay, well this is a, a two-man job here. Oh, really? To... Uh, to open the... Yeah. Okay, that releases it. Yep. Okay, and... Shall I hold it? Uh, well, uh, we can have Gary here. So, what do we... We have uh, uh, the, the Jaguar... 3.4 liter straight uh, in line six. It's 160 horsepower. And that, you got to stop and appreciate that for a moment, don't you? 160 horsepower from the mid 50s is an incredible amount of horsepower for such a small engine. And it, and it stood the test of time too, because basically this this basic engine design um, was used for Jaguar cars well, well after the 120 uh, ceased to right. be built. Right. So <clears throat> it was a great engine and it performed very well. Yeah. Let's uh, swing around and have a look at the interior. The interior is a remarkable work of art, isn't it? Just the quality of the craftsmanship that the, with this leather. What can you tell me about the interior? Okay, uh, so in, in a restoration what you do is um, uh, you, you install a new, uh, what they call an interior kit. Yep. And um, this is the carpet dashboard. Um, wool, wool carpets, right? Yeah. Time, wool carpets. Oh, okay. And highest, it, highest quality hides for the, the, the leather, leather, yeah. leather seat covers. Yeah, the seats have to be recovered. Yeah. And notice, notice that the, how nice and smooth everything is. Uh, and that's very difficult sometimes. It takes, it takes to, a lot of skill to get yeah. the quality of product in the end. It's sure. not just yeah. exactly. putting your kit on. And the uh, gauges and the lights. The gauges are and all new. Yep. No, they were all, no, they were all re rebuilt. Oh, they were oh, rebuilt. rebuilt. That's right. right. Yeah, the gauges Specials. were uh, rebuilt and reinstalled. And um, and what about the trunk? Well, the boot. These tools are in beautiful condition. And uh, when I... When I had the restoration done, uh, this toolkit cost about $1,000. Today, I'm told that you'd have to pay three times that wow. <laughs> for this kind of a toolkit. <laughs> $3,000 for a toolkit. Okay, so the time to take it for a drive. And... <laughs> This car is definitely not built for the longer legged amongst us, is it, Ron? <laughs> no, so, it isn't. There's no adjustment in the seat? No, well, yes, yes, there is some adjustment, but uh, not very much. Yeah. <clears throat> the other problem for somebody that's uh, a little on the heavy side is, not that you are, but uh, the no, steering we, wheel... No, we can say that I am. <laughs> the steering wheel is extra Oh, so large, large. yes. And in the next model up, the 140 after this, yeah. they made the steering wheel smaller okay. to accommodate. This is a uh, this is a real man steering wheel, but it can't be a real fat man steering wheel. That's I noticed that it's a telescoping steering wheel. This, yes, is, it this is. is very fancy. Yes. Uh, although here again, uh, uh, with somebody who's on the heavy side, that's going to be a that's going to be a problem. How much you could use that? Yeah, and you can't see this, <laughs> but the the pedals are 
I like the old. Uh, it's like when I drove that uh, that 930 Porsche. The the pedals uh, fold down like this instead of straight in like yes, in, in a modern yes, car. Yes, you have to get used to that. Yeah. So if we have a look at across the gauges here, um, is the key? Is this the starter? Yes, yep. you turn the key and turn then the you key. hit the starter button. Right. And, 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 uh, the, and the revs go the opposite way, which is very cool. Mm -hmm. And there's a little clock on here. Amps. Amps. Uh, water temperature, oil temperature, petrol, mm -hmm. petrol. And it says pe press switch for oil reading. So I wonder how that worked. But it shows that this is the fuel gauge, basically. Yes. And this is the lights. That's the lights. The lights. This is a cigarette lighter, is it? Yes, it yes. is. The uh, wiper. The wiper, yes. Uh, a heater. So this is just a fan. Yes. It's, right. It's well. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I guess yeah. it's just a fan. Okay. And our speedometer. Our speedometer goes up to 140 miles an hour. What's this and one? Oh, this is a your, dimmer. Your, your panel will light dimmer. Oh, okay. And I noticed yes, that there's some switches underneath here too. So this must be the switch for adjusting the clock. Yeah. And this one must be resetting for the, the odometer, odometer right, setting. Yeah. Now, yes, it does say 140 miles per hour uh, maximum. Yeah, so we'll try and do that today, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> well, when this car first um, first came out, uh, the uh, Jaguar advertised the fact that this car is capable of of going 125, 120 miles per hour top speed. I'd say anyone and, doing 120 miles an hour with drum brakes has got a death wish, haven't they? Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. But some some people did. Some people wow. drove this as much as 130 to 135. Yeah. So they they made their case. Yeah. And this is quite a large uh, rear vision mirror too. I imagine. There's not a lot to be seen through this well, little baby. Some, some people, uh, some yeah. people, when they bought these cars, uh, would have a side view mirror oh, okay. on each side. Uh, this this particular one didn't have yeah. one. I mean, we could have put one on yeah. as an aftermarket, but yeah. we didn't. But yeah. let's just stop for a moment and appreciate the quality of the workmanship in this car as well. Everything is just better than new, isn't it? It's just a oh, beautiful, yes. beautiful car inside. Oh, yes, 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 yes. A lot of work went into uh, to making this right. And um, it starts with the, the engine, uh, it starts with the dash panel in the fact that uh, these are original instruments yep. which had to be uh, rebuilt. I see. Uh, so that they work properly. I see. And they do work properly. Right. Okay, so the big Big moment has come. Let's take it for a drive. Yeah. All right. So startup procedure. Um, ignition on. Yes. Light comes on. Half a tank of fuel. Yeah. Gauges in the green. And this is the starter. Yes. Hit like the it, button. Just hit the button. Yeah. Woo -hoo. All right. <laughs> We're off and running. Okay. Away we go. So clutch in. First gear. A little bit of revs. Ah. I love how all the gauges work so well. See the oil pressure goes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All the way up on the clutch. Oh, and now, sorry, I'm going to take the brake off. So how does the brake work? Up like this? Yeah, there we go. There you go. Okay. Amateur hour here. And then you got to get it into. Were well, you going to go ahead or? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Away we go. <laughs> this is so cool. <laughs> Boy, this is a big wheel. Yeah, it is. It's a real big wheel. <laughs> it makes you feel like a big wheel, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> It's 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 pre-war technology. Yeah, yeah. So what did you say? 160 horsepower was it? Yes. Yeah. And do you work on this car yourself? No, I don't work on it. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, my forte is uh, detailing. Oh, okay. Uh, but my son Gary over oh, there, your son does, yeah. uh, he he does some work on the car, oh, nice. but. Um, 
when all is said and done, we sometimes need to do, depend on a, uh, a, a qualified yeah. mechanic right. to, to do the work, and uh, that's paid off for us. So what are we doing? 30 miles an hour. I don't actually feel too too, uh, too much like going too much faster than 30 miles an hour. <laughs> Taken it up to well, I've taken it up to about sixty. Sixty, okay, yep. So it's quite a different car handling wise than other cars. But you know, this is an older generation. This is a fifties car, yeah, so yeah, so it, it, it's a fifties. The car. way it the way it tracks on the road is quite different than a modern car, isn't yes, it? Yes, absolutely. It really feels like it sort of toes in in the corners. Yeah, well, even even if you compare it to uh, the next generation Jaguars, which is the E-Type, yep. which was the 1960s and early 70s car, it was quite a big jump in technology, yep. and, and you don't have this uh, play that you're yeah. experiencing now. Yeah, so there's play, and when you're even, even moving along the road like this at a reasonable speed, you really have to wrestle the car in a yeah, way. You've yep. got to, you've yep. got to uh, pay attention. Yeah, yeah. You've got to pay attention. And now and now here we are on the brakes. Oh, look! Another classic car. So this is the indicator here? Yeah, that's yep. the speed uh, of the uh, directional turn signal. Yeah. Oh, green. Oh, oh, come on, that's it. Oh. Off we go. Boy, this is the perfect day to be taking this drive, isn't it? It's, it's pretty, the perfect temperature. It's a pretty spot here. Isn't it a great spot? So how often do you drive the car? Well, not very often because yep. uh, to keep it in this show quality condition, you, don't want uh, to be. You, you, you just can't take it out very often. Right. But you have to drive it uh, you know, maybe uh, a couple of times a month because one of the worst things is not to drive the car. Right. Then you can get into real problems if you don't drive the car. Yeah. You know, your seals will dry up uh, and all kinds of bad things can happen. And what, why was why was the, uh, the, the, X, the, the 120 the car for you? Well, um, the lines. Oh, the lines, the okay. lines are it's so magnificent. Car, yep. And in fact, when they went to the 140, yep. uh, I thought that they lost some of that original uh, beauty right. in the lines. Yep. And uh, a lot of people feel that way too. Yep. So the 120 is the purest example of, of the beauty of the lines um, of the XK series. Yep. Ryan, I really appreciate you letting me drive your car, your beautiful car today. It has been such a pleasure. It's really an experience like none other. Um, I didn't touch the yeah. gas, maybe I just got a little bit of gas. Yeah. Can <laughs> <laughs> <Should> I push? <laughs> Come on baby, start for us. Start for us. Come on, you can do All it. Right. What I would suggest is, we may have flooded. Responsive is uh, a modern car. A modern. Oh yeah, ah, too late. Yeah, How about over here? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going in.
Yeah, the brakes and and uh, and the the steering. Yeah. Um, that's that's challenging. Let me just.